My name is Cindy, and I'm based in sunny San Diego. If you are a new friend to our community, please accept our wholehearted welcome. And know that if you are unsure or have, or have any questions about our practices and topics, we are here to help. And if you are a regular, welcome back. It is customary in Australia to begin any meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we walk, study, and reside, the Wodi Wodi people of the Darawa Nation, and pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging. I also pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you stand. The check-in sessions have been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. These sessions aim to develop a reflective practice in response to changes. Guided by humanistic Buddhism, we would like to cultivate our practices and build memorable friendships. Last week, we were all touched by Cecile's sharing of the wounded healer and it prompted some very deep and vulnerable discussions. Today, we welcome our friend Liam to share his turning point story on his realizations of community. During, this, during his sharing, we invite you to listen deeply and appreciate the twists and turns that human life offers. Using this amazing opportunity to practice turning off our inner chatter, and being completely present. Let's welcome Liam. All right, thank you, Cindy. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you all. Um, as usual, we'll start off with our quick check-in. So just um, allow yourself to find a nice, comfortable space where you feel safe. And whether you're seated, lying down, standing, um, just make sure you're as comfortable as you can be. And if it feels comfortable for you, you can close your eyes and just gently bring your attention back to your breath. However it is, and as you breathe in and breathe out, allow a sense of relaxation just to come naturally. Imagine that relaxation sweeping down from the top of your head through your face, covering your whole head, coming down through your neck and your throat, relaxing down into your shoulders, all the way out through your arms, right out to your fingertips. and coming back to your shoulders and letting the relaxation flow down your back and through your spine. And coming back up to your chest and relaxing your chest and your abdomen, relaxing your waist and your hips, your buttocks, and both legs all the way through your knees, down out to the tips of your toes. You can feel your whole body relax. Maybe even a little bit refreshed. Feeling this relaxation might bring a little smile to your face. Nice sense of calm. Maybe a bit of openness and receptivity. Maybe even bliss. And when you're ready, you can slowly start to reorient yourself to the community and open your eyes slowly. Have a look at everyone around you. Maybe smile. All right. Thank you, everyone. So now that we're nice and ready, hopefully nice and um, calm, relaxed and open, I'll get on with my turning point story. 
So um, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about my turning point story. I was looking for the perfect one, um, but it turns out uh, I like to make the jokes that um, I've had so many turning points. It's like I just keep turning around. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you a bit about my life and hopefully it'll make sense. So yeah, let's get started. So I grew up on the beach in Wollongong as a very free-spirited kid. I went to school just like everyone else, but I was interested in other things. Um, I decided I was going to be an engineer, a horror writer, a Buddhist monk, and the next Michael Flatley. But I only pursued one of these, and I ended up a national Irish dancer at eight years old. It was all great fun, but it was a lot of pressure. I loved and strived for perfection, good grades, but above all, approval. I was bullied for being different and no amount of praise from parents, teachers, or the community could counter that. So I went about my life being different. My parents divorced when I was eight and my younger brother and I spent our later childhood moving from school to school, basically looking after each other. I left Irish dancing, but carried my sense of different, solidifying my identity as an alternative musical art kid who had a keen interest in Japanese pop culture. This niche took me through primary school pretty well, but it all fell apart in high school when I was just a little too different. Feeling alone and outcast from my peers and even my family, I sought friendship online where I met a man who I considered a mentor during my teenage years. It was later brought to my attention that this was a case of pedophilia. Even so, I learned a lot about self-confidence and identity as a gay use from him. Unfortunately, it was my desperation for approval and perfection that took things out of control when he suggested that I should get fit and take pride in my body. And this resulted in an eating disorder that I've been living with for the last decade. I was first hospitalized with anorexia at 15 and close to death, I was put on an eating disorder program, feeding tube and all. I quite liked it though, all this attention and specialness, and I developed a new identity. Six weeks later, I left healthier, but it was a lot harder. Multiple suicide attempts and relapses landed me back in hospital, and I completed high school and some of university via correspondence. I just couldn't handle the anxiety and depression, and I had nothing to turn to now that I wasn't considered anorexic anymore. I was still different, but I had no identity. All that I had was my interest in spirituality. It was during a stay at the Hills Clinic, a mental health hospital, that I met Ling Halbert, who ran therapy sessions for the patients. She noticed me reading a Taoist book and she handed me 365 Days for Travelers by Venerable Master Xing Yun. I was shocked. I used to visit Nantian Temple every weekend as a child and I'd completely forgotten. Luckily for me, as we all know, Ling is a very diligent propagator and convinced me to become involved as a volunteer. I even took refuge and attended the Nantian and Guang Buddhist monastic retreats. Even though I was very close with the temple, I continued to explore other spiritual traditions, which led me to India to study at age 22. Again, I thought I'd found myself a new healthier identity as a yoga and meditation teacher. But I came back to Australia sicker than ever at my lowest weight, back to hospital again. I was desperate for a way to recover and live healthily and happily, but I just couldn't seem to find it. I was just spinning my wheels perpetually recovering. It wasn't until the second lockdown that I got stuck with my grandmother and uncle who offered me a radically different path family. Without a second thought, I accepted and it was the right thing to do. I hated every time they would challenge me, but I got stronger and kidly, as they called it, the immature anorexic faded away. Two years later, at 26, I was finally an adult, working, making friends. I even completed NTI's graduate certificate in humanistic Buddhism. I had a full-time job and my first rental, but within a month of moving in, my housemate left and my cat died. The two reasons I got my life together had suddenly vanished. What was I to do? Would I collapse, call mum and go back to hospital like all the other times? Or would I stand up and face it all on my own? 
It was around this time I found myself getting more involved with the community at our Sunday check-in sessions. I thought if I've got nothing left, at least I've got Buddhism and the community. So finally, after looking at it on my desk for so long, I finally picked up Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple, a gift from Venerable Joe and forced myself to read it cover to cover. I'm always in awe of how the right things appear at the right times. Previously, I would have taken this statement to mean that I just have to do everything on my own because everyone else will let me down. I had no confidence, but now I'm starting to see that I'm just a little self, but the Dharma is what I'm learning. The interconnectedness, the interdependence that everyone I've ever met has contributed to my life in some way or another. Causes and conditions, simply put, I am because you are. When I took refuge and precept ceremonies at Nantian Temple in 2017, I was given the Dharma name, Upholding Affinities. I've never met Venerable Master Xing Yun or Abbas Manko, but somehow I think they knew. Now I often say I only got where I am today because of everyone else. And I'm reminded of Venerable Joey's little saying. Humanistic Buddhism is people becoming Buddhas through people. And I rely on this simple piece of Dharma because I know that it's working. Every little bit of community proves it. So that's the end of my, my life so far. I hope you all enjoyed that little um, biopic. Um, I didn't want to give any specific questions. I just want you to all have an open discussion on your reflections and what lessons you may have taken from uh, community and how that's helped you realize that we're all connected in some way, how we support each other. So I'll hand it back over to Cindy. Thank you, Liam, for your sharing. That was a very deeply personal story and the power of community. And thank you everyone for your listening. Now we are invited to contemplate and discuss the following questions. First question, do you have any personal reflections on Liam's story? What lesson, second question, what lessons can you take from Liam's story? Now we will be placed in groups of three to four to share and discuss. In the discussion, we recommend you spend some time getting to know each other and then discuss our questions. There will be some notifications to guide you, but feel free to let the flow of your discussions guide you. Our sessions are guided by Metta, which is unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. Let us use these breakout sessions to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another, and take time to pause, share, and listen. We'll also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout discussion. So for now, let's go to our breakout rooms for some rich and nourishing discussions. See you all back in 15 minutes. Okay, welcome back everybody. Hope we all enjoyed our breakout groups, got some good reflections happening. Uh, so if you'd like to type your thoughts or your reflections into the chat box, as always, we'll collect them and put them into a lovely poster for you and send them out midweek. Um, so if you want to share those, I'll read a few out for us now. In my group, we talked about um, the power of vulnerability and strength, but also being able to look into our dark sides and always discover more uh, when never done. There's always something to find. So Latin says, changing within ourself by the guidance of Buddha Dharma, sharing this learned song during secondary school in Buddhist society. No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Buddha Dharma, show the way. That's very nice. David Starlight says, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Love it. From Priscilla, when we are able to receive from others, we are also able to give with greater power as shown by Lynn. Thank you for such a beautiful story. Oh, it's Priscilla. 
Okay, so keep those comments coming, everyone. I'm sure we had some great discussions. Uh, but for now, I'll hand it back to Cindy to close the formal session and we can discuss some more of it later in the plan. Over to you, Cindy. Thank you, Liam. We really hope the check-in sessions was helpful to you and we hope you experience the unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. Next Sunday, we will invite Venable Jailway to help us reflect on our past year together with some contemplative writing. But before that, we invite you to a special event on Saturday. Join Bante Damika and Venable Jailway for a discussion on Bante's recent book, Exploring the Buddha as a Human Being. From 10.15 a.m. next Saturday, get to know the remarkable man, teacher, and historical figure. There will be a chance to ask Bante Damika questions. The link for the meeting will be shared in the chat and this week's email. We will officially close for a year end break with our last formal session on the 18th December and recommence the 15th January, 2023. However, our generous facilitators will be on hand on the usual Sundays during the break for a check-in conversations and a shot of friendship over the holiday period. Thank you, Jonathan, Katya, Stephen, Cecile, and Ina, who will be kindly be facilitating over these three weeks. As we check out today, let's recite the dedication of merits together to send love and compassion to whoever is in need. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Thank you, Liam, for your generous sharing. Thank you, Lai Ching, for being our IT today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Now we will have our usual plenary session. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next Sunday at 11 a.m. Australia time.